Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's and Morning Prayer on this Wednesday, the third day of March. Today we celebrate the lives of two clergymen from the 18th century, Charles and John Wesley. Uh, morning Prayer, Rite 1, begins on page 38 with a sentence of scripture and then we move on to our confession of sin during the season of Lent. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Together let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Invitatory Psalm. <clears throat> this morning we will read together the Venite, which can be found beginning on page 44. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. It's a portion of Psalm 103, which begins on page 733. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with the mercy and loving kindness. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass, we flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and in its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. Gospel passage comes to us today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, beginning at the second verse. And Jesus sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. 
They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 4, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy performed, promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. John was the 15th and Charles the 18th child of Samuel Wes Wesley, rector of Epworth, Lincolnshire. John was born June 17th in the year 1703, and Charles on December 18th, the year 1707. The lives and fortunes of the brothers were closely intertwined. As founders and leaders of the Methodist or Evangelical revival in 18th century England, their continuing influence redounds throughout the world and, and is felt in many churches. Although their theological writings and sermons are still widely appreciated, it is through their hymns, especially those of Charles, who wrote over 6,000 of them, that their religious experience and their Christian faith and life continue to affect the hearts of many. Both brothers were profoundly attracted to the doctrine and worship of the Church of England, and no amount of abuse and opposition to their cause and methods ever shook their confidence in and love of it. Both Wesleys were educated at Christ Church, Oxford. It was there that they gathered a few friends to join in strict adherence to the worship and discipline of the prayer book, and were thus given the name Methodists. John was ordained in 1728 and Charles in the year 1735. The two brothers went together to Georgia in the year 1735. John as a missionary for the Society of the Propagation of the Gospel, and Charles as secretary to James Oldenthorpe, the governor. Shortly after their return to England, they both experienced an inner conversion. Charles on May 21, 1738, and John on May 24, at a meeting in Aldersgate Street with a group of Moravians during a reading of Luther's preface to the Epistle of, to the Romans. John recorded, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone, for salvation, and an insurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. So the revival was born. The later schism of the Methodists from the Church of England occurred after the death of the two brothers, Charles on March 28, 1788, and John on March 7, March 2, 1791. But John's uncanonical ordinations of elders for America, bitterly opposed by Charles, doubtless set the basis for it. There you have the lives of John and Charles Wesley. 
We serve, continue our service by affirming our faith, reciting the Apostles' Creed, which can be found uh, starting on page 53. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. We begin with the Lord's Prayer, followed by Suffrages A. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. We continue with the collects, beginning with the collect for John and Charles Wesley. Lord God, who didst inspire thy servants John and Charles Wesley with burning zeal for the sanctification of souls, and didst endow them with eloquence in speech and song. Kindle in thy church, we beseech thee, such fervor that those whose faith has cooled may be warmed, and that those who have not known thy Christ may turn to him and be saved, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, the King Eternal, who dividest the day from the night and turnest the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep thy law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done thy will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a moment to offer our prayers and thanksgivings. We pray for our parish and school, for all our families and individuals. We pray for our community. We pray especially for those whose lives are linked to ours. And we pray for anyone facing any adversity, sickness, illness. We pray for healing and strength. We give thanks for those who serve us especially during this coronavirus, those who are first responders, those who put their lives at risk, their health at risk. We give thanks for the military who serve our country. We give thanks for the leaders of our nation and the world. Take a moment to invite your specific prayers and thanksgiving. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. 
conclude our prayers <clears throat> by saying together a prayer of St. Christostom, found on page 59. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised to thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining Morning Prayer today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.